It's been so difficult coming to this decision after spending the last four years post-grad gaining patient contact hours, shadowing hours, and uh, et cetera, and retaking classes. But I don't want to continue to live in limbo. Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. And today's video is called Giving Up on Becoming a PA, Giving Up on PA School. The reason I'm making this video is because I read a very sad, pretty heartbreaking post in the PA School Application Cycle 23-24 Facebook group. Basically, if you're not familiar, it's a community of pre-PA students, PA, uh, people applying to PA school, just kind of supporting each other, sharing tips, talking about individual programs and advice and whatnot. Just basically a very, very wholesome kind of supportive community for people hoping to become PAs and to get into PA school. And so... Once in a while, you get one of these, and it always breaks my heart just because I remember being in this person's shoes, considering, you know, am I cut out for this? Am I going to make it? After my second rejection, second year in a row, it was like, I should probably just give up, right? Do something easier because there's like a 2% admission rate overall in PA schools. And it's like, all right, I'm probably just not going to make it, right? Well, I mean, spoiler alert, I made it. I've been practicing for two years. It's a great job. I'm very happy with my choice. I wouldn't be able to do anything else. I love my job. Uh, but you know, the, the road up here is uphill and it's very, very, it's very scary to try to put in that much effort and sacrifice that much time and money and effort and just like commitment and hope for the future and put all of that, all of those eggs in one basket of one day getting into PA school. And on top of that, also getting through PA school, getting licensed and actually starting to work as a PA. It's terrifying. And so I definitely feel for this person that wrote this post. And I'm going to put it on the screen, but I also want to read it, you know, verbatim and then talk about it just a little bit. Uh, so here's the post. It's by an anonymous member. Obviously, this person didn't want to share who they are for very good reason. Uh, so here's the post. That being said, also, it's a public post. You know, it's available to the public. So I don't think anybody would mind that I read it here. A bunch of people have already seen it. So here we go. The person says, I am moving on from the PA path. I applied to 13 schools this cycle and early to mid-August due to finishing a course due to my GPA, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I was ghosted by three schools, six rejections without an interview, got four interviews, two wait lists, and two rejections post-interview. So just going to stop right there and say four interviews is pretty dang good. You know, applying to 13 schools, very admirable. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of uh, commitment, all those secondary applications and everything. But getting four interviews is fantastic. Two wait lists which is also very, very good. You could always get off the wait list and at least you did well enough to get on the wait list. You know, most people don't. And then two rejections, of course. So, I mean, this person is like right there. They're just right there. You know, they're so close. So it's, it's very sad to me just with these statistics alone that the person is giving up because they got four interviews. That's already very, very, very high. That's like top 10% of all applicants. And then two wait lists. So this person is like top 5% of all applicants, you know, if they took some feedback from these schools that they were rejected by, did a lot this year to kind of fill in those holes, I don't see why next year they wouldn't get in, you know, but, you know, they're choosing to give up right now. So they go on, they say, I'm a low GPA applicant, so I knew my chances of acceptance were lower from the beginning, which is true, but you got four interviews and two wait lists, you know. Ugh, it's so sad to me that they're quitting. But so they said that I think I... Uh, I think my application is well-rounded though, which is why I think I got four interviews. I did one paid mock interview to prepare for, to prepare. And in retrospect, I think I should have done more and applied earlier. Yes, especially to rolling admission schools, you do have to apply as early as possible. August is way too late, uh, depending on their, their uh, timelines. But I would say August is too late if their deadlines are September, October, November, August is way too late. So yeah, definitely applying earlier. And yes, I highly recommend mock interviews with somebody who's good at doing mock interviews and has a track record of doing good mock interviews, such as myself, uh, boristhepa.com, if you want to do a mock interview. They go on to say, to be honest, I'm terrible at interviews because my mind goes blank due to nerves. This is why you practice. This is why you practice, 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 first with friends and family, and then you do a mock interview and treat it like an actual interview when all the pressure is on. Dress up, be on time, check your Wi-Fi connection if it's online, and just treat it like a real interview. And the more you do that, the less nervous you get at your actual interview. So I highly recommend mock interviews, not just because I do them professionally. Uh, and then they go on. 
They say, I got my second rejection post interview today, which is honestly, I was honestly expecting, but it still is somewhat crushing. Oh yeah. Somewhat crushing is an understatement. It's terrifying. It's a huge blow to your ego. It's a just pit in your stomach saying, oh my God, I didn't get in. Uh, I actually really like the program. Yeah. So it's, it's a pretty sad rejection when that happens. They go on to say, I don't want to keep applying for years to come. So I think I'm ready to move on from the PA path now. It's been so difficult coming to this decision after spending the last four years post-grad gaining patient contact hours, shadowing hours, and uh, et cetera, and retaking classes. But I don't want to continue to live in limbo. I know there's a chance I might get off the wait list, but I honestly don't think that I will. So I really like the way that they described it as living in limbo because that's kind of how you're living. You know, you're putting in all this work, spending all this money, doing all this crazy stuff to maybe not even have it pay off. So living in limbo is a good way to put it. And it's just so sad when that happens, um, especially if, you know, your work doesn't all pay off and you get into PA school. Give me one second. Sorry, I have to plug my laptop in because it's about to die. But yeah, and again, I just want to emphasize that I really wish they weren't giving up because they're so close, so close. But anyway, the person goes on to say, I've been looking at local ABSN, so that's Accelerated Bachelors of Science in Nursing Programs, and the price and time it takes also is very appealing. I'm sad that I won't be a PA, but it really, I really just want to start my career. I wish you all the best in the rest of your process. Um, yeah, ABSN is definitely, definitely a good idea if you think that you may not make it into PA school or if you just want to, <clears throat> like this person is saying, start your career sooner because the, uh, they're much less competitive than PA school. There's so many of them and they're quick. They're like one year, maybe one and a half years max. And then you're a RN BSN making 70, 80, 90 K a year, you know, not exactly what a PA makes, but pretty dang close. Uh, and also at that point, nurse practitioner is always an option. And also after a year or so of working as a BSN RN, you know, PA school should basically be a shoe in too. I'm not promising that, but you'd be super duper competitive as an RN applying to PA school. And I've seen it happen a few times, but usually RNs go to nurse practitioner route just because it's a much easier, uh, easier admissions process than PA school, much less competitive. So, I mean, this person's head is in the right place. They want to be in medicine. They want to start their career. So they're considering this ABSRN, uh, ABSN program, which is a good option. I actually, anybody that I'm advising into PA school, unless I really truly think that they are a shoe in I really do, uh, I really do recommend almost every PA school applicant to also apply to one of these ABSN programs as a backup because worst case scenario, you don't get in. And then this ABSN program is one year. You don't get into PA school, spend that year getting experience and getting a very terrific backup option of being a BSN RN. Uh, instead of just taking a bunch more undergrad classes, which will do basically nothing for you and getting, you know, low level PCE experience as like a medical assistant, whatever, like it's good experience, but not nearly as good as a nurse, as a BSN, you know, so I actually really highly recommend these ABSN programs, even if you think that you are going to get into PA school, just as a placeholder, you know, to at least apply and have that option if the worst should happen and you do not get in. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the first part of this video. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about is just this very uh, tragic, very heartbreaking story about the person wanting to get into PA school, spending four years after graduating from undergrad, trying to get in, getting experience, retaking classes, just getting to be the best applicant that they could possibly be. And a lot of it paying off Four interviews, two wait lists, like, damn, they're close. So heartbreaking that they have to stop now. But either way, I wanted to talk about that. And then also very quickly, I wanted to share my own pre-PA timeline, uh, just to kind of put it into perspective, saying that this person took four years to retake classes and get experience. And, you know, they're giving up after four years, which it's a very long time to be in limbo, as they said. And also, I just wanted to show you my pre-PA timeline to show you that my 15 years in limbo uh, eventually paid off. And now I'm a PA. Uh, so let's just talk about that real quick. And the whole reason I even have this graphic made up is because I'm applying for my PA license in North Carolina. Every state makes you do different things. Uh, and so I'm applying for my PA license in North Carolina and they actually make you put in your entire timeline of everything you did from high school all the way to the present day. So I'm not gonna talk about every one of these in detail. I want this video to be you know five or 10 minutes max, but I just wanted to show you, you know, from high school, graduating high school in 2007, 
going into an engineering program, 2007 to 2008, hated it, didn't want to be an engineer. And so I wanted to be pre-med basically from that year on and then becoming pre-med biology major from 2008 to 2011. So I graduated college with a biology major, 2011, very low GPA, 2.98, no hours, no clinical hours, no patient care experience, not even all of my pre-PA uh, prerequisite courses done, just total train wreck of an applicant and just didn't even apply because I knew like, I'm not going to get in. So it was useless. And also I had all these student loans and like, I just, I was not in a good place to try to apply to graduate school. Uh, and so after graduating from college in 2011, the summer, you know, I was looking for a job. The economy was kind of crappy at that time. So I did some waiting, uh, waiting tables. I did some other little odd jobs. I delivered food for food fetchers, which was like Grubhub way back in the day. Uh, like you had a pager, you didn't even have like a smartphone. So yeah, I did all of that. And then finally landed a job using my degree with a National Prion Disease Pathology and Surveillance Center, NPDPSC, at Case Western Reserve in Cleveland, Ohio, which was a cool job. Uh, but I was like, you know, basically a lab tech and I didn't like it. And so I didn't like it so much that I quit and became a bartender because it sounded like more fun at the Mad Greek, also in Cleveland, Ohio. And like... I don't know. I mean, I knew I didn't want to be a, a lab cut, a lab tech. I knew I didn't want to be a bartender, you know, forever. I just, I knew I wanted to still be a medical provider, but I had no idea how to get there because I had crappy grades, a bunch of student debt, and essentially no hope for the future. I knew I needed a change. So I joined the military. Why exactly? There's a bunch of reasons, but I, you know, I joined the military. I joined the Navy, spent two and a half years in the U.S. Navy Ceremonial Guard in D.C., two and a half more years as a yeoman for HSM 37 out of Kaneohe Bay, Hawaii. Uh, basically doing like travel arrangements and budgets and whatnot for helicopter pilots. And then had a very short break and then did a post back program to improve my grades at Cornell University. That was two semesters. And then immediately upon graduating from that program, barely even catching my breath, I immediately started my job as a scribe for physicist scribes. And with my experience, they needed a new chief, uh, basically like a supervisor scribe for that team. So I did that, you know. Hindsight, probably shouldn't have done all that responsibility at once, but it'd be what it be. Um, and then, where is it? Oh, yeah. I don't know why this is out of order, but basically about six months into that, I got an opportunity to be a medical assistant for way better hours and way more money uh, and also just a different skill set, more hands-on than being a scribe. So I went to go do that. And during that time is when I finally got into PA school, took a couple months off, and then there's PA school, and then, you know, there's my history. Uh, as a PA, you know, the two years that I've been practicing. So basically, from 2008 to 2019, when I finally got into PA school was, what is that? 11 years. 11 years, and I guess you would call it limbo. I mean, I was constantly moving forward. I was getting life experience. I was having the time of my life in DC and in Hawaii. Like, I was doing cool stuff. You know, it's not wasted years by any means, but it was years not spent as a PA or even in PA school. Uh, but either way, I guess you could call it limbo. I just call it life. But my point in sharing all of that is whatever your personal journey has to be, if practicing medicine is what you want, never stop. Don't stop until you get there, whatever path that may be, whether you keep firing away at PA school or whether you become a uh, bachelor's trained nurse in one of these accelerated bachelor programs for a year, year and a half, and then become a nurse practitioner down the line, or you do a few different things and go to medical school, whatever the path is for you, just if you have it in your heart and soul and blood to become a medical provider to practice medicine, it's really a calling. And people like us, we can't do anything else. This is the job that is meant for us. So if you are one of those people, please do not give up. Please do not give up. And just whatever it takes for you to get there, just do it one step at a time. Let me know if you need help. I'll see you guys in the next video.